Hello everyone, my name is Peyton Barnet and I'm an environment texture artist in the game industry. This is a beginner tutorial going over my process and techniques within Marmoset Toolbag. Before we get started, I just want to say thanks for downloading the tutorial, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to my email. So when you first open Marmoset, this is what it's going to look like. I'm on Marmoset Toolbag 3.08, and uh, yeah, so I'm basically just going to go over some of the UI and everything before we get started rendering our actual uh, material in here, and go over some of the things that we might need uh, as we go along. So up here, just like most um, softwares or anything, there's like the file, edit, view. Um, this is where you can add a new scene, save your scene import all that kind of things i'll go over some of these uh, later ones like capture and stuff once we actually um, get the material set up and all and then below that there's a toolbar basically for the scene itself this is where you can import model as well you have add light cameras fog some of those simpler things that might help out um, the scene and your render and then below that is your actual outliner for the scene this is where everything that is in the scene will show up. And as you click on each of them, you can see below that you'll get the attributes and details for each of those pieces that you can edit basically. And yeah, and then this is actually the viewport itself. So once we import a model and everything and bring it in, you'll be able to see it in here. Right now it just defaults with this um, plain background. We can also change the background and everything to where we can adjust it to our liking. And then over here on the right side is our material editor and the materials like outliner as well. You can add materials and stuff up here or delete. Um, but yeah, once you actually click on our material, this is the default that's just automatically added to every um, scene once you open up Marmoset. But this is where we will be able to add our textures and everything to our material so we can then apply it to our model that we bring in. So what I'm going to do is to get started, I'm actually going to bring in a model. That way we have something to put on the shader and everything. And the models I actually use for Marmoset are the same exact ones that Substance, Desi Substance Designer has. You can actually just go into where you've installed Substance Designer and it should be in the um, files for the meshes and everything for the software itself. But yeah, so I can just go up here and hit import model. I can find it in my um, location. I've just put it in a different file to save time trying to find it. And I can just either single click or I think you can double click as well. And I can bring in both of these at the same time if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, so I might just bring in a flat plane, um, a, a rounded cube, and then the rounded cylinder from um, Substance Designer. So if I hit open, there we go. And you'll see that each of them come in differently. I made the plat flat plane myself um, just because I wanted a little bit more geo on it and then the rounded cube and stuff is a bit smaller let's say that we wanted basically to oh yeah uh, i guess toggling and like moving around in the actual editor if you hold alt and then left click like drag then you can move around and then right click drag is how you zoom in so um and then if you actually want to move like around like this it's basically the middle mouse, but everything's while you're holding Alt. Um, so similar to other like 3D softwares, but sometimes takes getting used to in each one. Yeah, so this is, like I said, the cube actually from Substance Designer. Um, I'm gonna turn off, you see the little eyeballs over here. I can actually turn off each of those if I don't wanna see the cube right now. Um, and let's say that I didn't wanna see the plane just going to close that and so yeah let's start with working with our cylinder itself and this is it 
I can, you see when I brought it in, it actually brought in the, the Lambert or whatever material that was just applied to it um, before. It's just like a template default. I can also just delete this one and throw on the default if I wanted to. Um, when you, if you drag your material from over here onto the actual mesh, it'll just apply it. And yeah, but you didn't see anything because we don't currently have anything set up for this uh, shader itself. But one thing that I might suggest um, jumping around a little bit here, but you can add folders. So let's say that we wanted to organize it a little bit more to where each of our um, pieces basically has a different uh, like lighting setup and render settings or so for it, then we can actually uh, folder select each of them and it'll make it a little bit nicer. But for now, I don't really have anything in here. Uh, but once we get a little bit further, I'll probably set that up. So yeah, um, basically now we can set up our actual material or bring in our shader itself. So I'm going to go over here and what I'm just going to start bringing in, you can, so if you drop down the texture, this is where your tiling attributes are. If you want to change the tiling of the material itself, it's just default at the one right now. Um, but if you want to tile it more, so you can do that. Also, you can tile along a certain UV axis, uh, depending on if you want to change that up a bit and how your UVs are laid out on your mesh. But for this, I'm going to bring in the bricks that I'm going to use. I'm wanting to show you kind of how I would render out some of these bricks and go about bringing in the height map and everything to get the displacement working. Um, that way you can have like nice renders for portfolio. But yeah, over here, I'll bring in the normal map first. So I'm just going to go to my location. Uh, and then go into, yeah, so it's a brick that I made um, from St. Augustine or so. And, but yeah, I have my normals and everything already exported from Substance Designer. And I'm just going to bring that in. So we have that. And then uh, you don't have to change anything. Sometimes it depends on how you have your... Uh, your normals but like unreal and marmoset have uh, different normals that they do one uses direct x and one uses OpenGL. so keep that in mind if you're using like multiple softwares or so that you might have to um, change that if you don't want to change it actually in substance designer or so you can just flip on the y here and it should resolve any of those issues that you have um, but generally if you are looking in here with the light and everything you can see whether or not your uh, normal map is flipped. But um, yes, so what I'm going to do is now bring in the roughness. So, and then you can see here that uh, as well, you can change this to gloss if you use gloss instead. Um, and if it's not set up, you just select normals and then the uh, albedo is also your base color. Um, I can just bring that in as well. Okay, and then um, diffusion, no. Uh, metal, if you have a metal, you can bring it in. There's also, you can change it over to specular if you have a specular map instead of a um, metallic map, but uh, I'm not using either of those, so uh, because this doesn't actually have really any metallic. Sometimes people put metallic in their foliage or like their grass or so, um, but I didn't for this piece. And then I can go down here. Any additional things you want to add as well uh, are just down here. I'm going to drop down and add occlusion. So this is my AO, and I'm going to bring in my AO. So, yeah. And so right now the light it's a bit dark um, as you see here and then yeah there's transparency emissive stuff like that as well but for this in 
this piece doesn't really need that. The only other thing that I really need to bring in is my height map. That way I can get the um, like displacement and tessellation going on with the actual thing. So you get a little bit more um, forms and shapes. So up here, displacement, I'm going to select height. And I can bring in my height map right here. And right now it's broken. You can just drop down the scale. And then um, up here, subdivision, you can do P and triangles. Um, and then that should tessellate it a lot more. So you can see if I actually go to uh, where is it? Uh, I think in the camera, um, forgot where it is, but there is a selection to where you can turn on basically wireframe so you can see how much it's actually changing but right now yeah I'm just going to turn it up a bit uh, so we have the and I can limit the scale a little bit more but you're starting to see that we're getting that displacement that we're wanting um, see so yeah, right now it's kind of hard to see because my light is not actually that uh, contrasty and um, directional so I want to adjust that. Right now all I have in the scene is actually just a skylight. The skylights are nice because it's the background and it's also just your uh, overall like um, like global illumination almost of the skylight that hits even the dark points. If I turn that off like you don't get anything but we don't actually have a directional light at the moment. The reason why this area over here is just slightly more lit is because of the hot points on the skylight itself. And so that's just giving a little bit more brightness. Um, I'll go over some of these uh, once I get a directional in here. But what I want to do is actually add a new light. So this can be our new light. I'll drag this over here and move it like this. And it doesn't actually matter if you um, this is currently a spotlight when it's brought in but we're going to actually switch it over here um, if you don't see this it's because it has to be selected so uh, like over here you won't see it but just select either here or in your outliner and it'll bring up the same attributes and I can change the spotlight over to a directional and then it doesn't matter where it's actually placed uh, but the the angle rotation is what's going to matter with it. So basically I can start to get almost like a sun-like atmosphere from it um, and start getting an angle that shows off my normal map and my uh, height displacement um, in a good setting. I keep my tessellation lower, especially depending on the uh, power of your computer because if you work with it high uh, it'll tend to it can sometimes freeze up marmoset or um, just in general it just lags a lot so I'll keep it lower while I'm working on this it's not too important and then once I want to uh, render out my sh screenshots I'll bump it up to a higher um, level that way I get just you know the better reads and everything but yeah so have that and then I can also, if we click back on our directional skylight, I can change the brightness of it if I want it to be brighter. Um, I can change the distance of the skylight, uh, attenuation curve, uh, a lot of these settings. The width of it itself is actually going to be the width of the skylight. So if you want, right now you see my shadows are really harsh. If I change this, it's going to really soften the shadows. Um, and so that can help if you're rendering some other things. Uh, like I did that with my coffee beans, just to get some softer shadows and the edges. Um, but it really depends like case by case. And yeah, so I'm not really gonna change anything else here uh, besides maybe the color of the um, uh, skylight itself or the directional light. I'm just going to maybe pick a, 
a decent like uh, whitish orange almost like a yellow actually just to get a little bit of like the essence of a um, sunlight where it's not completely white and that'll do for now so I want to jump back over to my uh, skylight itself and so now we can adjust the brightness so you see that it's not affecting any of this back here at all uh, and then we can basically yeah so um yeah i'm just changing the brightness to where it's giving a little bit of light back here but not too much and then the child light what that is talking about is if you actually click on here you can give little point lights to the um, piece and so like let's say i wanted more light over here i can find where that is on the um, actual like 360 um, and i can basically add it and then if i wanted to brighten it up using that and that way you can actually get some of the colors from the environment itself if you wanted to uh, but and then as well you can also rotate it but I'm not really going to do that right now but one nice thing is like you probably wouldn't find this brick inside of this uh, looks like a almost like a firehouse i think so I'm going to change, they have some really nice presets in here that I can just choose for uh, environments. And I might change it to something that's a more uh, fitting um, environment for this brick itself. So there's some things like forest, that's not bad, hedge row, and you can see the updates here. It's also updating in here. It's a nice way to kind of toggle through. Um, that one's kind of nice. There's a sunset. That feels like a place that would maybe have bricks as well. Um, forest is not bad, has nice soft lighting. So you can go through here and just play with that and basically find one that fits you or your scene and try to find something that's kind of similar to the environment that you are creating. So we can either we can go with this for now. So I'm gonna hit done. And right now I'm feeling that this is not as contrasting enough now because of how bright this backside is. So I might either um, soften down the backside or so with the skylight. Yeah. So, and then the backdrop brightness. This is actually talking about this backdrop. What I can do is here in the mode section, I can change it from a color. If I want to select a color, uh, just do black for like a thumbnail or so. Um, I can do the actual background it has and have that in the background. A lot of times this is pretty noisy and you can't read the environment or your material itself. You can of course blur it um, if you had the blurred sky like here, but I still find it sometimes to be quite uh, noisy in general unless you're doing a shot that's kind of trying to represent um, the environment that it's in. I think I might have, uh, let's see, yeah, like this. I kind of was like feeling that this rock was somewhere in the um, forest or so, and that's why I kind of used the backdrop blur uh, to represent that. Um, but yeah, so for this though, like a cylinder shot, I tend to not have a, a sky background at all. And so I might change this to be either, not the, I'll, I'll probably use a color and then I might do uh, like a dark gray for um, if I'm doing just a single like ball or cylinder sh shot. And so there we go go I might change this to be maybe around eight I can also just type in a number and there we go and right now I'm getting there we go so the cold back faces that's why I was getting the issue with the uh, the lighting up here uh, just resolves that um, so now it looks you know, proper I think that's because, yeah, 
so you can see that basically how the light's changing with that. And I wanted to get rid of that lighting error. Yeah, so we have our material here. Um, starting to get a nice little render going on for like a cylinder representation of this material. Um, and might change the brightness a little bit more of the background um, or the color itself. Now let's say that I wanted to bring in some green or something over here. I can, uh, or even some of the sky, I can start to grab some of that. But this material does have a lot of green in it already. So I might do something more like the, the sky and bring in some blues. Um, if you're wanting instead to actually bring in like some cooler lights to show how it works in the different lighting, you can also just add a uh, let's say instead of a spotlight, an omni light, which is like a point light basically. And we can put this over here. Um, and then change that to if you wanted to say like a blue or so. And that might show off, um, get like a almost like a a rim light on this back side for the uh, for the light itself. It's not too. I might instead of using Omni, I might use a spotlight just because I'm I'm wanting a little bit more harsh uh, shapes from it. So the widget's going a little crazy right now. And then I can change the width and stuff of the, or the angle of the spot like that. Um, that way it doesn't give like a harsh line or so. Uh, let's see, something like that. And yeah, but that's if you wanted to give a little bit more light. You could also change it to, you know, being whatever color you want. And it might just help with the overall feeling of this backside. Um, that way it's not just like a one-sided kind of situation and we can get an understanding of the overall form of it and how it looks in different lighting. Um, but yeah, so that might be a bit too blue, but you get the point of how you can kind of add some, some light back there. And now if I'm adding a light back here, I might even go back to my skylight and kill my brightness a little bit more. That way it gets some more uh, contrast with this middle part and the front part and back part. So yeah, so that might be a, a decent look for a cylinder ball. Um, I also want to kind of go over how I would do like a, a flat plane as well. Um, but one thing we'd actually want to do is setting up a camera. So generally I start to set up a shot uh, pretty early on so that way I keep on jumping back to the camera itself when I'm working on it. Um, so right now we're just toggling around in the main camera. You see it here. I can change its settings and everything but um, basically I want to actually create a camera that I don't move and so that one can actually be controlled and kind of edited for the specific shot that I'm going for. So let's say that I'm wanting this for either a thumbnail or just a cylinder view. I might find something here to be kind of pleasing. I can hit new camera and basically now I'm on camera one as you see and this is the attributes and the details for this new camera. So basically what I can do now is I'm going to lower the tessellation a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm piloting this camera one. If I want to go back to the main camera, I can click over here and now it's there. So if I go back to camera one, it's at the location that I want. Um, but yeah, with this camera one, what I want to do is first off, if you find a shot that you like somewhere like here, you can hit lock and it'll lock, uh, the camera to where I can't move it. And so like, it's just always in that location. But it also, uh, with this lock, it'll actually lock the um, all of the attributes and everything as well. So 
I think you can also lock uh, I don't know if you can actually lock the uh, just the attributes of the transform um, doesn't look like it but uh, yeah I just tend to lock my camera once I'm like not uh, done editing it or so and that way I don't forget and move it around and if you if you are bad about forgetting which camera you own I maybe suggest like uh, doing a couple things with this one and then making a second camera in the same exact location that way if one of them messes up and for some reason you you jump to a different uh, you like move it around or something and forget to lock it then you still have it back up there just to be like super safe so but yeah let's say that I want to um, oh, that was displacement have a shot somewhere around here then yeah so this is camera one um, the cameras actually have quite a bit of controls that I can adjust and all so the let's see here I'm just going down here and there's limits not really needing that um, field of view if you want to change the field of view on it um, and kind of get it where it's so the, the closer you go, the you know the flatter it's going to be. So it's getting more orthographic. Uh, and then it's defaulting, I think, at 45. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, and then zoom back in. And yeah, so if I want to use depth of field for this one, I can turn on that. And what's nice about this is I can basically change the focus distance to where it's uh, starting to focus in on my uh, brick itself and then I can change the near blur to where the that's the one that's closest to the camera uh, like it says and then the far blur is the one that's farther back so and I can show this on the flat plane and it's a little bit better of a understanding but um yeah so let's just do a slight far blur and then I can just turn off the near blur basically uh, and then yeah so that's even if you wanted to use that at all. You could also do it like, let's say we're looking at this angle and we had our, I need to calm down the uh, displace a little bit, but I wanted it to be um, like that, that top area is basically blurred out. So I can just bring this, wait, oh, so there we go. And I can just do the far blur and do that and then focus distance and you see it's giving like that kind of miniature feel to it uh, with the focus and that way if you want to like focus in on a certain area uh, like my type or something then you could do that but uh, sometimes I'll just use it when I'm actually just having my camera itself set up like this I'll use it for like that uh, kind of soft uh, let's see yeah like you see it back here that it's kind of blurring out this back area that way it, it kind of gives the priority to the foreground and gives like a nice fade off like a, a natural camera might if you're doing like microscopic uh, shots of things um but yes yeah, so i'm just going to change this a little bit and yeah so let's say that that's how we like our cylinder shot to look for either our thumbnail or anything like that um, we can just leave this for now and I'll just lock this camera as well. Uh, I wanted to see if there's, you can also, before I did that, I wanted to show that there is uh, tone mapping and everything inside of the camera as well. Um, you can change quite a bit of things, uh, your exposure, contrast, uh, all that, but generally I wait till the very end before I render out the shots to do any like adjustments like that either that or you can also do it in you know Photoshop or something if you like that more but there is also sharpening I'm not a fan of that it just gets too noisy you know, I guess you could do a little bit but in general like typically feel um, you can either do that in designer or elsewhere but um, I just yeah it gets really grainy in here um, 
there is the bloom so if you want to bloom it out but that's also depending on the type of material and stuff you're trying to do uh, I like to you know you want to show off when you're presenting your material the best so the bloom tends to kind of blur things out just if you uh, start going too crazy with it it's like a foggy haze and I feel like I can't really fully see the material um, and then yeah, vignette uh, that's for the background. You can see that it's kind of adding a vignette around here for a cylinder shot like this. It's not as important, but if you're doing something more in the lines of like a full plane or so, it might be worthwhile. So, and then also there is a grain. If you want to add a grain, you can see it's kind of adding like a grain over the top. Um, but that's also kind of similar to the sharpness where just gets pretty noisy um, unless you're wanting to go for that grain effect with the camera itself so yeah and then also uh, one other thing before I switch over to the plane the render settings there are some settings in here as well uh, for the um, rendering of it uh, this is where actually the wireframe is so I can see how much it's actually tessellating or so um, so yeah, it is pretty extreme in here when you are uh, tessellating, and that's why people use it so often for um, rendering out materials and so, because it can really make your materials uh, look nice with its height and everything. But um, yeah, yeah, the displacement and everything is pretty solid. Uh, but of course that wireframe and what you're seeing there necessarily wouldn't be able to be used in game um, but if you're just showing off uh, what your height can do uh, potentially or so um, then that's definitely something that uh, is nice to have as a feature so yeah, and there's cascades I could turn up my shadow resolution depending on your um, computer uh, have it to ludicrous instead of high. I think it yeah, defaults the shadow cascades. Uh, some of these things can kind of help uh, as well, just get a better um, like feel to it. There's also uh, ambient occlusion for the whole thing. Um, but I'm going to leave that to my actual AO map uh, over here. And one other thing as well. Uh, with these is you can change the uh, well of course you can change the scale the displacement of the tessellation everything um, but you can also change the uh, metallic and the AO strength and everything in here uh, gives you some of those editing features uh, which is nice um, as well as like I said before the, t the tiling so you can see it's starting to tiling a lot more I might do let's say if it's a ball uh, two is too much so maybe like a 1.25 uh, that might show it off a little bit better but I think like I was kind of working in designer with it uh, at one and so for a cylinder I would keep it at one but on my plane I might have it for a 1.5 or two um, and yes go going to the actual plane itself I'm going to lock this so this camera can't move going to jump over to the main camera and you see that we have the light this light too this camera and this rounded cylinder and these are all like one thing um, as well as the skylight actually so what I can do is I can actually just group this and so now it's adding it to a group so if I turn that off it disappears so I can name this the cylinder group and it's just a folder structure to keep it a little bit more organized that way this outliner doesn't get super filled with things um, but yeah so now we can go with our plane itself and start to get uh, our renders for that so I can just turn on the plane um, and try to find it oh. It's because we don't have any lights in here. That's why. So, uh, where it doesn't have a material. Plain flat. Uh, oh, that was the issue. So, sometimes it's a drop down. It'll have like 
So this is the the import plane flat is what we imported, but below that, if you have your model into separate like it'll separate it out even if it's like mesh combine and so you can move these things separately so if you bring in like a whole let's say scene with like a little house and a ground and everything and here it would come in as your house but then here i could actually move my house around and keep the uh the overall like uh structure the same um, which is kind of nice because you can still kind of set dress and everything in here if you needed to. But with that, what I was having the problem with was basically the the imported plane flat was uh, visible, but the actual plane uh, mesh was not. So I just needed to come in here and turn that on. Um, so now I can close my cylinder. And if we wanted to, I might actually just take this light and I can hit duplicate selection and it's going to make me a light one and then I can drag that out of here and put it up here um, just dragging with the left mouse click basically so now I have a light one um, and as you see my planes this direction I would probably want it to actually be flat that way we can play with the directional light a little bit more so I'm going to take this and I'm going to see uh, the um, rotation first and see which way and that seemed to no that was upside down so I could just do a negative on this and there we have it there is our um, flat plane and now you see that our actual like displacement and stuff is working differently on the flat plane just because of the tiling and everything like that um, but the problem is like if I change the tiling and all, then I'm going to have to change it back and forth for each of my uh, like cylinders or shapes. So I'm just might probably just going to duplicate this one and then I can name this one um, plane and the other one can be for my cylinder itself. So with this one, let's say that now I'm going to apply the plane and then I can change the uh, tessellation or the actual tiling so I'm probably gonna change the tiling to something more like that uh, feels like an accurate tiling uh, you see my defaults still the same so and that way I can have my two different materials for my two different like cylinder and scenes and so um, and it's nice to still be in the same uh, tool bag actual file and not have to jump between them but have them organized enough to where you can jump back and forth so yeah I'm going to kind of calm down my uh, displacement and maybe check on my tessellation and so this displacement or this uh, this directional light I'm wanting to I can also do lighting one or name it whatever I want plane uh, directional and I'm kind of quickly going through these things but you might want to actually like name these to be a little bit more organized um, but for the sake of the tutorial I was just quickly doing that but yeah with the plane directional I can change this one and it's entirely separate than our uh, original light and so I can move this around and toggle it and it's basically yeah your sunlight uh, just like any other thing you see that the, the shadows are a bit harsh now on this that's when I would maybe change the uh, the softness of it so you can see that once I let's say it's getting much much softer shadows um, but Yeah, and then this also might need a slightly brighter light in general. Um, there we go. And then let's switch this. And it's going to just take some tweaking, going back and forth, seeing what feels right and what doesn't. Looking at your reference as well uh, when you're doing this and seeing, like, you know, what it what it should look like, how the sun feels on it, and trying to replicate that in your scene. Um, so I want a little bit of shadow, but not too much. Uh, starting to feel like nice looking like that. I might 
change the width a little bit more, but I don't want it to be too soft for the shadows. I still like that, that harsh dark that you're seeing. Um, but yeah, I just want to make sure that it has a little bit softer of an edge. That way it's not uh, so jarring. Um, so yeah, this is, I mean, since we already set it up for the cylinder, it was much easier to kind of set up the, the plane and all. Um, and kind of adjusting that. I can also make a new uh, skylight, basically, where is it? I can also just go down here and take the sky and duplicate it and move that up out of the cylinder. Uh, so you see when I'm dragging, uh, it does that. They're basically like it's the hierarchy. So if I just drag to this one, it's going to be underneath the actual light, uh, which you might not want. So I'm dragging it to the left and that way it'll drop over there instead. So now I have the, the sky copy uh, light. Make sure that this one's off. Yeah. And if this is off, then it should be off. So, and now I can choose whatever environment that I'm feeling. Um, if I right click this little uh, child light, it'll get rid of it. Uh, since we're working on a new thing, I might not want that child light there at that location. Um, but yeah, I can change the brightness of the uh, skylight or even find a different preset if one that might work better. Um, but yeah, for the, uh, I also used one other thing I want to show is to get a little bit more definition or at least like for some of the shots, uh, like, um, I did not add it in here. Um, for stuff like this, it might be good as well. Like this is good for a shot like this, but if you want to show off um, a little bit more of an angle or so, uh, sometimes it can be a bit flat just having it like uh, that flat. So having some form of uh, geometry that might be, you know, slightly warped or so uh, might not be bad either. I have one that is a plane that's let me I think this was negative 90 so there we go and I can apply it to that and then make this one hidden and it might be a tad bit much uh, and I can flatten it a little bit uh, but basically I'll delete that as well why this is nice though oh, I was changing the wrong one be careful of that. Uh, but let's say I wanted a shot that's like looking over here, so um, and has the I might actually change the texture tiling to a two point five or so if I'm actually going to do a shot down here. That way, like the resolution of the actual material is still like. Um, intact for like a more up close shot but yeah let's say that I wanted to do something like this uh, with the sky copy now I could do a um, instead of a color background um, I'm gonna keep my tessellation low I also found recently that you can actually do what's cool is there's this in a speedy viewport mode and it'll basically like kill all the expensive stuff for while you're working inside of here uh, and that's a pretty cool feature um, if you're wanting to kind of set things up so yeah for now I just can turn that on and basically go over to my sky copy and change my maybe the background to a blurred out sky and if I don't like what's being shown back here I can rotate it uh, or even rotate my my mesh itself if that works better but let's say that I wanted this to be yeah um, maybe there's a better preset um, let's see you can select the um, actual mesh right here and then just yeah like change it or so if you need to um but yeah basically gonna set this up 
and click that done right now. And then we might want to make an additional camera or so that way we can actually do our uh, depth of field if we're wanting to do like some close up editing of it. Um, calm that down a little bit. So yeah, just going to add another um, camera basically. And so this will be camera two. I can also change this to be the plane camera, which you might want to do that way you know which camera you're looking at when you actually drop down this uh, camera selection tool. Uh, so yeah, let's say that we have done this. We want to be in this area over here. Um, don't know which way. This might be better to actually have the shadows going that way with our shot. So let's say we're doing this. I can just change the camera or the lighting around to see what works um, best. So let's see. No. Some nice shapes. These aren't bad either. So, yeah, anyways, we can kind of, let's say, select something along the lines of this. I feel like my brightness is a little bit. Yeah. And then, let's say that I wanted to get a shot like here or so. Then I can basically set up my plane camera that I'm on. To do that depth of field like we were doing earlier, change the focus distance to be maybe in the middle of the screen if I wanted to. The near blur could be blurred out slightly, and then the um, drop the tessellation down a little bit while we're doing this. And then the far blur, let's say, goes here. Um, might soften the near blur a little bit more, or might even just take the near blur away. Um, and so yeah, we're starting to get like a focused kind of uh, location, and this will actually change the density or the like harshness of this of the uh, the blur out. So the focus uh, scale. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to do some like shots like that, and then just change the far blur to be slightly further and yeah if now we feel like the background feels a little bit different we could either just eliminate the background or just find a uh, sometimes I don't even show the background I'll do something like this and it feels a little bit better because the whole material is just taking up the shot um, for that so yeah I might even just do this switch back do Blur is a little bit extra out there, um, and then the near blur is a bit softer, and then the you'll have to with a shot like this you'd have to up the tessellation uh, quite a bit if you're actually going to have pieces like sticking up that far because you can start to see the banding coming from the tessellation itself, uh, or you could just soften the um, displacement. But I feel like getting some of these shapes and stuff with the the shadows and information is pretty nice. So, and then you can also change the light now that we're here and kind of selected something a little bit better. And then, yeah, this it might be a shot that you might like to have a, let's say, a um, vignette on a little bit more. So you could do something like this. Uh, but a lot of times I might even do the, the vignette inside of uh, Photoshop just because I can edit it and control it a little bit more because it's just this is just a very controlled like even vignette and maybe I want you know it to be a little bit darker over here so uh, that's you know up to you but um, don't see anything else right now that I'm really looking I can change the field of view if I wanted it to be a bit harsher. So yeah, so let's say that this is our plane shot. I'm going to drop down the tessellation, that way it's all good. 
and um, we have that saved as well. So yeah, we basically just went over the like primary things to setting up cameras and everything inside of Marmoset and how to render out or how to set up your materials ready for rendering. Um, and it's pretty simple. That's why I like using Marmoset compared to like Unreal or something, because within an hour you can have something well set up to show off your materials if um, you'd like. And I think it does a pretty well job of uh, giving a lot of tools that you need to kind of show them off as well. Um, but the, yeah, the final process would be actually rendering out these uh, materials themselves and getting your shots kind of set up and ready. Um, so with that, basically what I do is go to the camera that I want. So let's say camera one, um, or let's say plane, because we're already on the plane. Um, and so what I'll basically do is turn up the tessellation. You can even go past the 2048, but I'm not for this. Um, so just let's say turn up the tessellation, have it set up, and make sure you have all your settings. If you want to do any contrast or anything like that, feel free to do that. Uh, unlocking it, change the contrast or exposure. Um, and yeah, when you, you're basically ready to shoot this as a shot, uh, one thing you can do first is this button up here is your capture button. So you can go up here and before you actually want to capture an image, you want to go to the settings and you want to set up the settings to how you would like them. So for images right now, it's basically 1920 by 1080 uh, with sampling at 16. Um, I can change this. There's a, a like you can either match your viewport or you can change it to a specific one that you'd like if you want 4K or so. Uh, and then the format that you actually want it to come out of. Uh, right now it's just defaulted to PNG. If you want a JPEG or something that uh, offers you know, a little bit more control, then uh, you can do that as well. And then um, if you want any of the transparency, if you're wanting something that's like cut out or so, you can do that as well. And then with the video settings, um, didn't go over really recording a video, but uh, I can also set that up real quick to show you, but you can change that as well if you want 4K video and then the sampling of it and the format of the video as well, uh, depending on what you're looking for, as well as the quality. But yeah, so that's set up to where I'd like it for this at least. And I can actually just, um, there's also the output folder so you can show where you want it to output to. Um, I think I just already have it set up, so I'll just hit, um, you can either hit image and you won't see it, it'll just go straight to your output folder. Uh, image and open will actually open it here, and then there's even image to clipboard or image to art station, uh, depending on what you want to take it. So if I just do image and open, it's actually going to take the image and open it. There we go. There's our shot that we just took, um, and I can take this in. It's a PNG saved to my output folder. I can take it into Photoshop and edit it, if not um, throw on my uh, my little watermarks or so. Uh, I tend to use my name and like watermark of substance designer and Marmoset. You can get those offline, and they just you know help uh, keep it professional and all of that for shots. But yeah, basically exactly how this was set up it was just. Um, just like how you saw where uh, I did the depth of field and everything just had a strong light coming from one direction and that's basically it um, but it I think it shows off your materials pretty nicely um, I didn't go over the shadow thing basically I just brought in a tree that I had um, and placed the tree over it and had the light coming through the tree and that's literally uh, all it took to get the shadows and the dappled lighting and I think it added to making it feel a bit more like it was in a scene um, but yeah that's all you really have to do to get that as well so you would just bring in a model of a tree um, with your textures 
if you have like you know your leaves and everything apply it to that and then just have those actually um, the sun basically coming through the tree and I think just yeah having some of that kind of stuff certainly helps sell the uh, the piece itself um, for video I do want to show you that real quick just because of uh, I think they're nice because I've done a video or two uh, just rendering you can either do like material ball changing or like your camera moving um, for this what I'll do is let's say down here uh, I don't know if you noticed it but there's the keyframes and timeline so you can pop these up and this is basically where you would uh, render out your video with um, and so first what I want to do is select plane uh, which is my plane camera so it's at its current location and you can see in the keyframe section this is the plane there's visibility camera target transform you can change the depth of field if you want it to like rack the depth of field um, from the front to the back or so uh, you can do that which is pretty nice any post effects you could change um, your strength of light or anything um, there's quite a few uh, quite a bit that you can actually do with the the controls in the keyframe of the video which is pretty nice um, but for this I just want to change the transform and technically uh, not the rotation I don't think just the translation of XYZ um, so I'm gonna go here and basically just uh, add a keyframe for that and then I want to move it down to however long I want it to be so let's say seven seconds uh, you can see down here on the timeline and here's the length of your frames per second all that stuff as well I can move my camera to over here and then just do a second one so now you see we have that and if I just hit play it's that simple and basically all I would do now is actually just hit capture video and it's going to export that um, now one thing I do suggest is instead of so it's it's doing a uh, see the slow build up and then slow fade out uh, basically um, I think it's better if you just select all your keyframes and you just actually make it um, harsh that way it's just consistent the same speed and so when you're putting multiple uh, shots together then um, like if you're doing it in Premiere, so uh, which I tend to do, I'll take a couple of videos and then edit them together in Premiere. But yeah, if we have this now, it's just a, a flat um, distance and like it doesn't change at all, which is nice. So yeah, and that's basically how I would set up my uh, video for if I was recording this. You can also, let's say, um, so this is the actual plane itself uh, that's the material you can select the geo you can see the the different icons based off of that uh, so I guess technically you could like uh, <laughs> I guess um, change the tessellation or so as the video goes along I don't know why you would do that but uh, sure um, but for this you can actually also keyframe the the mesh itself moving if you wanted this thing to let's say uh, rotate I basically could just um, and this would be this would work more for for the cylinder if I wanted to have the cylinder rotate but I would just basically keyframe here and then go down here and let's say rotate it like this and um, keyframe it again and then it's gonna be really nauseating you get the point of like the actual uh, model itself is kind of rotating and how you could basically uh, rotate your cylinder if you wanted to show off it actually kind of dynamically moving and the nice thing about video I think uh, even with the static material it definitely shows off like how it feels in a scene and it just adds a little bit more of that three-dimensionality to it um, compared to just a flat render um, and then you could also even yeah, export it out as a GIF or something, and that might be a nice kind of uh, thing to show. But yeah, so I'm going to basically delete these because I don't want that going on with that. 
And um, yeah, so going back to the plane, drop this back down. And I'm, I am moving the plane, uh, so that would have been nice to probably uh, lock, but yeah, it doesn't really matter because I've already rendered these out. But yeah, if you basically, this is the entire process of how to render something in Marmoset and how I do my process. Uh, most of it is pretty straightforward, and a lot of the buttons I feel um, kind of explain what they are and what they do. Uh, this is, you know, fog and stuff like that. You can also bake in here and everything, but um, for my purposes of uh, rendering out shaders from Substance Designer, I feel that uh, this process is pretty straightforward and um, is, yeah, it's really beneficial and helps me a lot. So, yeah, if anyone has any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to my uh, email, which is, I think, uh, online at ArtStation. Um, if you have any comments or questions about anything, um, or even just, you know, uh, like to send a shot and let me know if it helped out or so, anything like that. But uh, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you then.